Alright, and I'm back again. It's the Historical Gamer, and I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Um, so far I've been reviewing a couple of games with some historical significance, and um, also some games that at least deal with topics that are popular in American or world history. Um, but I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I wanted to start a, a small um, project. Um, it might it might grow in stature, but given the first game I was reviewing is a Civil War game, and I am a avid um, Civil War, I don't know, I'm avidly interested in the Civil War, if you will say. Um, I wanted to do something, seeing as we're living through the 150th anniversary of that war. Now, obviously, uh, 2011, the whole year of 1861, it was the 150th anniversary of that. Um, and, uh, I didn't do anything for that. wasn't even on YouTube at that point. But, um, what I am looking to do now, starting today, is I am going to start a project. It's going to be a This Day in History project, but it's just pertaining to the American Civil War. So I'm going to be looking at, on various dates, um, events that occurred 150 years ago to the date. So I'm not going to be looking at this day in history as in, for example, July 1st. I'm not going to be going over Gettysburg this year because that was in 1863 and the 150th anniversary of that isn't until uh, next uh, year. But what I will be looking at is the anniversary, the 150th anniversary of various events that happened during the Civil War throughout the year um, and given dates. And this is going to be the first of this project. Um, and hopefully there's going to be many more to come. Um, I'm not going to do every little thing, but I am going to, you know, pick uh, various events out and, and cover those and, and go over those. And uh, today is going to be the first one. Um, today I'm actually going to be looking at the Confederate States of America, or the CSA, um, the Confederacy, on this day, on January 18th, 1862, so 150 years ago today, the... Um, Territory of Arizona was formed under the flag of the Confederacy. Now, on this day in January 18, 1862, um, the Confederate Territory, not state, but territory, of Arizona was founded. It was actually part of the southern corner of the already existing New Mexico Territory, um, and it's something that it's kind of interesting. There's not a whole lot of information available on it, but um, actually here, I'm going to pull up a map of the territory. So the New Mexico Territory already existed, but the southern half of it, um, as you see on the map there, the, the part in the red box, is what became part of the Confederate Territory of New Mexico. Now, that was a result of a few things. One of the things it was a result of was in 1860, the area had actually applied for um, a ter to become a territory um, in its own right to the U.S. Congress. Congress denied it. There was some fear or thought it might become a slaveholding state, and Congress denied it. Um, the Confederacy gained a pretty strong support in the southern half of the state for various reasons, um, which I'm honestly not terribly familiar with. It's a fairly obscure um, topic in Civil War history. But anyway, uh, it became, or it, it formed itself into a state. And in late 1861, there was a convention held in which they adopted the um, Confederate Articles of Secession. And then in 1862, on January 18th, today, um, it actually formed the territory, and then in a, about a month after that, in February, Jefferson Davis formally accepted the territory into the Confederate States of America as a territory. Um, it was important because it actually would have given the Confederacy a link to California, um, which was a Union state, obviously, then. Can the Confederacy also had some dreams or thoughts of Manifest Destiny, which was the idea that um, they should have control of the continent all the way to the sea. Um, it wasn't called Manifest Destiny, I don't believe, at the time, but they did have this concept of this ever-continuing Confederate state, and New Mexico would have given them that opportunity to reach out to California. Um... In 1862, or sorry, in 1860, um, 
On, on July 25th, 1861, there was actually a Confederate victory at the Battle of Mesella, um, which did give the Confederates control of the southern half of New Mexico, and thus kind of brought this territory into being for a short while. Um, the battles the, the battles in this theater were really fascinating because in contrast to the even the western theater in the in um, the Civil War, the battles here were much smaller. They were really skirmishes by any, by any other standpoint. Um, the Battle of Mesilla, for example, only had about 300 cavalry and militia on the Confederate side and 380 Union troops. Um, the Battle of Glorada Pass, which occurred later, which was the decisive battle of the New Mexico campaign, had only 2,400 men altogether. Um, that would have been the size of a rather large brigade at the Battle of Gettysburg or Antietam um, in the Eastern Theater. Um, you compare that with, you know, the Union Army in the Seven Days Battles having over 120,000 men altogether, Confederacy having over 80,000 men, almost 200,000 men slugging it out for a week, versus a couple of day long battle um, in the West, which was the decisive battle and only had a total of less than 2,500 men engaged. So the campaigns are pretty fascinating. The Confederacy, uh, its uh, hold on the Arizona Territory, as it was called, didn't last very long. Um, they declare or they formed the territory in January on January 18th, 1862. Um, the territory was then officially recognized by the Confederacy in February, but by July. Um, or actually, I'm sorry, by March of 1862, um, the Confederate military forces, what were in New Mexico, were defeated. Um, and as a result, the Confederacy basically lost Arizona. Um, it, it obviously, as you see on the map, it wasn't really Arizona as we think of today, but that's what the territory was called. But yeah, by the second half of 1862, the Confederate Territory's governor, government had fled to Texas, to San Antonio, and they uh, tried to rule the Arizona Territory in exile. Um, there were still skirmishes, there were partisan clashes, um, but there was no serious resistance, and it was never really again threatened um, to become a part of the Confederacy. Um, but yeah. So that's the 150th anniversary of the formation of the Territory of Arizona um, for the Confederate States of America. I'm going to do a couple more of these videos, like I mentioned. It's going to become somewhat of a series. Future videos are going to have some more uh, depth behind them. This is a rather obscure event, but I wanted to start it sooner rather than later. So I did decide to start with this uh, rather unknown event. If, if you want to learn more about it, certainly just research it, because like I said, there's not a whole lot of content to this video. This was more of an introduction of what this type of series is going to be like. Um, in the future videos, I'm going to kind of build upon one and and uh, and then another to form sort of a, a backbone or a, um, a timeline, so you can kind of follow that way. I don't have to include too much background, because a lot of this, a lot of this, these events and information are really very um, grounded in what happened before it, but hopefully um, by by doing more of these, I'll be able to set kind of a context and a uh, and uh, a flowing history and and go over um, you know the 150th anniversary of this nation's uh, most uh, bloody conflict and uh, a struggle that still affects this country today. Um, thank you for watching. If you want to see more of these, just uh, like, subscribe, and um, yeah, leave any uh, feedback that you have. Thank you very much, and uh, have a nice day.